Okay, let's get started. This is CS2510 uh, intro. Actually, I don't want to say intro. It's basic because we are going to cover object oriented programming or OOP. But the language, if you will, that we're going to use is this uh, mathematical simulation package called MATLAB or Matrix Lab Laboratory. Uh, so this is week one, uh, lecture one. one lecture one introduction okay so I've given out the syllabus and you can read through the syllabus I'm not going to go through it in the sense it's uh, in the online lecture video I might go through it in class but anyway the goal of this course is for you to understand what is called uh, object-oriented programming but the vehicle we'll use is MATLAB or Matrix Laboratory. Something important, the reference for this is Cornell uh, University's CS1112 course. And you can Google search this and look up the, the course. It's got a ton of information. Specifically, they even have lecture videos on something called um, Matt TV, so go through the website and you can find it. And the reason why I um, got this, or why I use this course, is because I looked online for other similar courses that is OOP using MATLAB, and obviously I couldn't find any. Well, not a lot, but I couldn't find any that I liked in the sense. The OOP courses I found online used specifically Java or C++ because those are OOP languages. MATLAB isn't. MATLAB is a general mathematical computational engine. And I realized that we can use this to our advantage. And that's why I'm using this Cornell University's CS1112 course as reference because what we can do is we can use this course as a vehicle to not only understand object-oriented programming, but to also understand a mathematical way of thinking when we are writing computer programs. In fact, computer programming is mathematics, although it might have been quote-unquote abstracted away and, oops, sorry, and you are not aware of it, but this course is a very, uh, it'll open your eyes to the fact that Without mathematics, you kind of can't do anything, including computer programming. Okay. And that might have been, and like I said before, that might not have been so obvious to you in the sense that when you do circuits, you're obviously using mathematics. And when you're writing computer programs, you're doing the same thing. So what does programming uh, really like mean? So basically, uh, in other words, the idea, the central idea, oops, by the way, this probably will happen often in the sense my tablet screens do crash for, or my tablet screen does crash, and I like right here. So I apologize for this beforehand. Maybe my tablet's getting old. I need to get a new tablet, but whatever. Okay. So continuing. So basically, the central idea behind this course is that. Writing computer programs builds computational intuition, okay? And what do you mean by computational intuition? Uh, by the way, for this course, at least for the first half of the course, as it is in the syllabus, we'll be following uh, the CS112's recommended book insight through computation okay or insight through computing anyway so those authors define I mean the authors of the book define computational intuition I guess there's no definition but they identify five uh, key properties or ideas associated with computational intuition number one is you need to develop or V including me develop an I for the geometric 
that is we should be able to visualize our problem and we'll do that throughout this course but the point is it's not limited to this course and then you need to develop an ear so you can ear that can hear what is called combinatoric explosion that is the data sets that we'll use in practical problems are huge but you should be able to or we should be able we should be ready for it and the third thing is develop so eyes ears and you probably guessed it developed a taste for the random develop a nose for dimension so discussing number three by develop a taste for random means uh, science and engineering is basically populated with processes that have a ra random component so you need to have a sense of probability and the ability to gather and interpret statistics. That's what a developer taste for the random means. A developer knows, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I'm actually still fighting a little head cold. Anyway, a developer knows for dimension means problems are usually solved in multiple dimensions. And as you increase dimensionality, specifically going from the second dimension to the third dimension, complexity increases, you could say exponentially. So you should be able to handle dimensions elegantly and MATLAB is particularly suited for this uh, in the sense although we will use loops initially in MATLAB I want to emphasize that uh, there are very efficient ways to manipulate large data sets in MATLAB without loops and we'll look at that throughout this course and finally we want to develop a touch for, like I said, I just talked about large data sets. So what is finite, inexact, and approximate? That is, on a computer, we have only finite precision, so we're definitely going to get rounding errors. And you should be aware of the implications of, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, finiteness and approximations. So the overarching goal, if you will, so developing these overarching goal of this course, if you will, is that, I mean, we need to develop these tastes, but more importantly, computation, through computation, <coughs> we can verify that we can test our theory and vice versa. That's why these double arrows and we can also experiment, of course, from theory, and go to experiment and vice versa, but this is the idea, okay? So each of these vertices, if you will, of this triangle represents a style of research. In my research, which is nonlinear dynamical systems and embedded systems, I do all three, okay? And, it, and going through all these ideas should give you pleasure, okay? It, this is very, uh, insightful that is these ideas I, I don't even have words to express the joy that I feel when I do all this and hopefully you will also feel the same so that's about it for this introductory video it's very short and I mean it's only 10 minutes long approximately and uh, videos I post on my YouTube channel will be at most 20 minutes long I might go I don't want to say at most, I might go like a couple of minutes over, but not too much over. So you can say 20 to 20, 20 to 22 minutes long, but I do have a timer here, so I'll make sure I'm not too over the 22 minute mark. But anyway, uh, I've distributed the syllabus in class and I've given you other instructions. So please start uh, playing around with MATLAB. In fact, I have started MATLAB and that's where we'll end. So here is uh, the MATLAB command window and starting next lecture which is actually a lab and for this lab i'll actually post a video <coughs> a 20 minute video online excuse me like it says in your syllabus that you're responsible for because we don't have any lecture uh 
after this one before the lab so in that video we'll talk about programming basics in matlab uh, so i'll see you then